Welcome back to the Realm of Unpopular Opinions, and today I will be doing a video that I know is pretty popular in some aspects of booktube, but I'm going to shake it up a little bit. It's technically the video, if you like this book, you're probably going to like this book, but I am going to make the recommendations interesting in the sense that I won't go for the obvious choice. <laughs> I won't go for like the obvious comparison where the books are either almost identical or everyone pairs them I'm gonna make it actually interesting for instance if you liked this aspect of this book you will probably like this aspect in this book they don't necessarily have to be identical plots or have the same tropes but they are similar in a certain way that I think you could enjoy them if you like that aspect of them anyway I hope that's not too confusing it's still a pretty simple concept and it's just a little bit of a more complicated way to recommend books so let's get into it i will begin with something that you would think is very straightforward <laughs> and that and also like just as a disclaimer a lot of these books will not necessarily be my recommendations it's just because a lot of these books i did not like but I'm going to form it in a way that if you like this aspect of this book, you will appreciate this book. I don't necessarily like all these books. That's important to say because the first thing on the list is if you liked Strange the Dreamer, which I did not like, I have these really pretty editions of books one and two because I thought I would like it and that was a fail. But if you like Strange the Dreamer, if you like the lyrical prose of it and the beautiful writing and just the atmosphere of the book, I am recommending Winter Night to you. This is definitely not usual because I feel like Winter Night is usually recommended on the terms of the fact that it's Slavic or like winter. These have nothing to do with each other plot wise. But I think that if you're someone who really appreciates the writing of this one, which I did, it was my favorite aspect of it, how beautiful the writing was and how lyrical and how you could feel every place as if it exists, Baron the Nightingale. Absolutely. If you enjoy that aspect of this book, you will love this, this writing 100%. There is a romance in both. Not important in this one. I mean... Not as important in this one, vital in this one. This is not a fantasy, don't be really fooled by it. It's definitely a romance. The author wanted to write a romance. This author wanted the fantasy. So if you appreciate the writing of this one, you will love this. But if you love this romance, you probably won't like this. So this is a bit of a stretch. But I think it's worth mentioning because these are the most, most, I can't speak today. These are the most similar in the floweriness of the writing style so I think it's worth mentioning. The next one is going to be a bit funny because I liked neither of these books but I really I really had fun when thinking up this video so this is going to be enjoyable. If you liked The Cruel Prince by Holly Black which I did not. I absolutely did not. The only book I tolerated was book two. If you liked this, if you're in it for the romance, but you still kind of want a fantasy setting, like it's absolutely a romance book, but you kind of want there to be a world that isn't our world, I think you will enjoy Kiss of Deception. Now, I preferred Kiss of Deception. I actually read all three books and I was pissed off only in the ending. But the point with these books is that they're both fantasies and you're always kind of on the edge of is it a fantasy or is it actually a romance? They both turn out to be a romance. None of these are spoilers. This is just so you know exactly what genre they are. I wish someone had told me that. These are absolutely a romance. Do not be fooled by the fact that they're supposed to be fantasy because they are not <laughs> supposed to be fantasy. But if you enjoy a romance that isn't in this world that has sort of a lot of tension, like this is a hate to love and this is kind of not, this is a love triangle. But still, the point is that the romance is the main part and it's still a fantasy and it has a somewhat engaging plot. This is better plot-wise than this. I had less trouble going through this than this. But if you enjoy a fantasy set romance that isn't anything beyond the romance, I think you will really enjoy both of these. For that aspect alone because the worlds are 
interesting enough that it's believable that they're real, unlike some other books <laughs> that want to be romances but just put no effort at all into anything besides the romance, which A Court of Thorn and Thorns and Roses. <laughs> I'm hiding because everyone stands Sarah J. Maas. Now this one is sort of going to be, I think, kind of cliche, but there's a reason for it, and that's if you like Six of Crows, if you like the, like, trickery and the team of people doing some heist or some job for money that's pretty much criminal. Basically, if it's about criminals going on some sort of job, you will enjoy The Lies of Locke Lamora. Because when I read Six of Crows, I hadn't read Lies of Locke Lamora. But when I read Lies of Locke Lamora, I thought Lee Bardugo, like... Not ripped it off, but definitely read Locke Lamora. But this is an adult fantasy, and this is supposed to be YA, even though both of these would benefit from not having teenager main characters. Like, for both of these books, mentally, I just pretended they were, like, <laughs> almost 30, because otherwise it doesn't really work. But Lies of Locke Lamora did it better, because this is actually a YA, for most of the plot. Aside from the character personalities, it could have been a YA because of all the romance and stuff. This is definitely adult because it doesn't focus on <laughs> any romance and not as much on the character relationships as on the heist. Like, this also focuses on the heist. But you're not gonna like Sis of Crows if you don't like any of the characters. This, I can't say I was attached to any of the characters, but I finished it, I still enjoyed it, and I had a lot of fun. It's also somehow a lot darker because I remember a scene from Six of Crows that's kind of gruesome, but this is all around just darker. The world feels like adult fantasy, even though neither of these are truly fantasy in the sense that, like, epic worlds are. But, yeah, if you like the heist aspect of Six of Crows and having fun with a plot, you will like Lies of Locke Lamora. But if you like just the characters in Six of Crows, you might also like Lies of Locke Lamora because the two main characters are absolutely lovable. I will say that. I do not like a world where the most likable character is also like unlikable, but he's the least unlikable. I don't like stuff like that, but I did enjoy Lies of Locke Lamora. So I think you could definitely draw from this what you wanted from this. So this one I will like not talk too long about because this is just for me because this kickstarted my reading so I'm just gonna mention it like as an honorable mention but if you liked Red Queen which we have already reiterated that I do not <laughs> I do not like this anymore I just have the books for the one the one character but if you like that you are gonna like Shadow and Bone this is this is a no-brainer because <laughs> I feel like at the time that I read Red Queen and I was pissed off at the ending, I picked up Shadow and Bone and I felt like this was what I wanted from Red Queen. It has very similar character tropes and <laughs> very, very similar character tropes. It's This is not a trilogy. This is like a quartet. Is that, is that the word? It's a quartet. This is a trilogy. But I feel like if you like that really, really cheesy YA, like this is more dystopian, this is more fantasy. But if you like that really cheesy YA with tropes... If you like this, you are gonna like this. Now, I don't think I need to say anything else because who hasn't read these two books? But I think it was worth mentioning because I remember distinctly after I read this and I was pissed off, I picked this up and I felt like it was Red Queen done right in term of some character trope that I was disappointed by in this. Now, I do not own this book, so I will just put it up on the screen. If you liked this book, you are definitely going to enjoy this. Now this is a bit of a cop-out because it's also by her, by the same woman, but I cannot exactly tell you anything about How to Train Your Dragon because I read it a long time ago, but I thought it was worth mentioning if as a kid or even as an adult. If you enjoyed the How to Train Your Dragon books, this is her newest series. I still haven't completed it because I haven't bought the last book. I was waiting for it to come out in paperback and then I just forgot to buy it. It's a worthy 
series to continue with because the thing about middle grade is that it's very easy to read and it sometimes has beautiful artwork like these books are gorgeous i feel like nothing is as pretty as middle grade books and there's like drawings throughout let me find something like for instance like that or like there's just drawings throughout and i love this book i read it as an adult because i knew her from when i was a kid i read how to train your dragon and it's definitely worth a read if you want to have fun and just look at some artwork. So yeah, like if you enjoyed her before, you can still enjoy her because she's still really good at what she does. That was the recommendation here because I wanted to not just have adult books. I wanted to make it as wide a range as possible. So if you enjoyed her before, you will definitely enjoy her now because she, she has still got it. Now this one's a bit of a no-brainer because we cannot have all niche choices in here but if you liked this which I haven't watched or read but I know exactly what it is about and like people that I know have watched it so I do know quite a bit about it you will enjoy Attack on Titan <laughs> I mean, this is even like says it, I think, on all of the volumes. It says it like Japanese equivalent of The Walking Dead. You will enjoy it because it, it tries really hard to be like The Walking Dead. I'm not even sure if he based it on that, but like there's something that eats people. And the plot of this entire series is how people or humans deal with with that threat that could like potentially end them how they deal with the end of their race and the mentality of people who know they're screwed basically so yeah if you enjoy the walking dead there's no reason why you would not enjoy this and if you're new to anime or manga this is your kickstarter definitely because in my opinion and i've watched like what 10 animes at this point it's not like i'm an expert but this is a great intro this was the first anime that I showed to my friend and she actually enjoyed it because it's so unlike anime. So I think you could really enjoy this. It's very, very close. Like if you watch it in English especially, you could almost not notice that it was anime. It's very, very close to regular animated shows. And because of the plot and because it's not set in Japan, it doesn't have Japanese names. So yeah, I think this is a really good intro to anime or manga. And if you enjoyed The Walking Dead, you will definitely love it because... That's pretty much it, which is kind of funny because I never was interested in The Walking Dead, but <laughs> I don't know why I like this. I think I think the characters, I like the characters a whole lot more than I was interested in the people in Walking Dead. So yeah, this is, this is pretty much straightforward. I had nothing else to say. Now the next few will also kind of be straightforward. I don't know why I said at the beginning that I did my best to make them not cliche comparisons, but... Some of them have to be, like, I apologize. They're still good recommendations, though, and I will tell you why. If you liked Lord of the Rings, I always pick up a different copy of this. I don't know why this is just fellowship. If you liked Lord of the Rings, you will like The Witcher. And now this is <laughs> a bit tricky because, and I can't believe I'm saying this, if you don't like the expansive world of the Lord of the Rings, like all the maps and everything that's fleshed out if it's too complicated for you, which hurts me to say, but I understand some people don't like getting into worlds that much. I think you'll enjoy The Witcher because it's it's basically like 2% of what the Lord of the Rings is. It has all the races and the different peoples and the largeness, the feeling of grandness that Lord of the Rings does, but he has no maps. He doesn't care about world building that much. There's no language. Like, I feel like this is like the low effort <laughs> of Lord of the Rings. This is an entire world that you could probably study. I'm sure people do. And this is just like little snippets of a world. But as you all know, because I love The Witcher, he writes it in a way that's really engaging and you still kind of believe him. Even though there's no nothing to back him up. Like you have no maps. You have absolutely nothing to prove his fantasy world, you still really enjoy him because of the way that he writes. So I think if this was too complicated, too taxing for you, you don't feel like getting into it, 
I would try The Witcher because it's a bit more modern. It really doesn't take itself seriously. It has a lot of jokes, but it still has the like grandness of a fantasy world without putting too much effort. It has all the different like dwarves and elves and all the all that kind of stuff. So this is like Lord of the Rings light if you want to think of it like that. It also has a group of characters that travel to do something and you love them all. That's one thing that you have in common with these books. Like you love all of the characters immediately. So yeah, that is it. You don't hate a lot of characters in this, just like Lord of the Rings. I, I don't think there's anyone to hate in the Lord of the Rings. It's like an actual established character. So I think that's something they have very much in common. And I can't believe I'm comparing these because I've never seen them really compared in this way. But yeah, this is my, this is just my thoughts. <laughs> this one is going to be very simple, but that is if you enjoyed 1984 <laughs> read I'm not even gonna say try out read V for Vendetta because he was heavily influenced by 1984 and you can tell the world is pretty much like that I think England prevails is sort of similar to what this like it's not identical it's not identical but there's the key topic and it's set in England like a world where everything's been destroyed and England is one of the only ones that remains and there's a lot of control over the people and there's a fight to break away from that. If you liked 1984, you will like V for Vendetta. And if you were depressed by 1984, because I haven't even finished the book yet, but I know the ending because I spoiled myself a long time ago. If you were too depressed by this, read this because unlike 1984, V for Vendetta ends happily or optimistically in a positive way. You will definitely enjoy it if you like 1984 and vice versa, honestly. But I would read this first and then this because this will not cheer you up. This will not cheer you up. There's a reason why it's taking me like two tries to get through this book, but I devoured this immediately. So yeah, you will, you will definitely love it if you like either of these. Now let's go to some <laughs> classics and then I will end it with something that you're tired of hearing about. But if you liked Pride and Prejudice, read Anne of Green Gables. Now this, these are both classics and I'm pretty sure this is like supposed to be an adult romance and this is like a, I don't want to say middle grade because it's really not, it goes beyond middle grade. But they are similar in the aspect that I will always compare these as the two best romances I've ever had the pleasure of reading or watching, both on screen and in the book because they both have the qualities of like an old school romance <laughs> where it's not really sexualized and it's not really Americanized. Like the beauty of a romantic, <laughs> of a romantic storyline, if you like that sort of thing, is prevalent in both of these without highlighting the aspects of the time period. Like you're able to enjoy both of these without being like, oh my god, like the love interest is so sexist, but they have to be sexist because it's the time period. Neither of those things is important in these two, which is fantastic considering when they were written. So if you like Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy, Anne and Gilbert are the way to go and vice versa, I will always, always <laughs> proclaim that these two are my absolute favorite romances in fiction always have been always will be in every adaptation of these it has been the case <laughs> so if you remove the constrictions of the time period i would like to live through this kind of romance so if you enjoyed either of these and you haven't read the other one please do yourself a favor <laughs> because you will definitely enjoy yourself i will not talk too long about this one because even i have had enough of talking about it but if you liked dune might I offer the Wheel of Time? <laughs> this is very hard to hold up because the book is heavy. But this is a comparison that I don't see often enough. This is always compared to Lord of the Rings, which rightfully so. I think he drew from both of them. But having read Lord of the Rings and Dune and the Wheel of Time, he drew a whole lot more from Herbert. Like a whole lot more. If you've read Dune and you pick up the Wheel of Time... You will forget about any comparisons to Lord of the Rings because this man really, really liked Herbert or at least drew a lot of stuff from him. He didn't have to like him, but I think he liked him a lot because he drew, paid homage to him. 
So yeah, if you liked <laughs> if you liked Dune, you will see a lot of aspects of it in the Wheel of Time because Dune has always been like yes, it's a sci-fi, but it has always bordered on fantasy for me. Like I was afraid that I wouldn't like it because I don't like sci-fi in book form, but I really enjoyed it because it was very close to fantasy. This is just like if you drew the fantasy filter over Dune and then added some more stuff, like it's not not the same. I'm not bashing on the Wheel of Time. We already know that it's one of my favorites. But if you enjoyed it and you liked how close your fantasy it was, pick up the Wheel of Time. You will not really not enjoy it. That's definitely for sure. And if you liked the Wheel of Time and you read it first, it's fun to read Dune afterward like I did because you realize that it's way more worth comparing to this than Lord of the Rings. It really shocked me when I read this. I was like, wait a minute, that's from the Wheel of Time. But then you realize that this was written like 30 years prior to Eye of the World. So yeah. It's a fun comparison that I don't see showcased enough, and as they are both my favorites, I would recommend both of them, but yeah, if you read this, it's fun to see how it drew from this, but if you read this, this might be a fantasy way of enjoying a lot of what Dune offered you. That wraps up this very, very chaotic recommendations video. I still hope you enjoyed it. I feel like I wasn't really, like... <laughs> wordy today i don't know why it's been kind of a tough week on my head <laughs> but i still hope it made sense what i said i tried to not recommend them based on the plots alone as you saw just based on some tropes or writing styles or character styles that were similar i still hope you enjoyed this i hope that you found maybe some new recommendations but if you read all of these then let me know what your favorite was and i hope that it made sense how I compared them because I feel like some of these can't be more different but I still found some similarities that I think are worth mentioning so again hope you enjoyed I will see you in my next video